All right, so let me welcome you one more time to this session. My name is Janet Clacken, and I am the instructional designer here at the Caribbean Examinations Council. Before we start, I want to just establish some ground rules. As you would have been aware, if you are, if you are trying to speak, all mics have been muted for now. You will get an opportunity to share with me a little bit more in the session, but at this point, the mics are muted just to ensure that there is not any feedback coming back at me and the rest of the participants when we have open mics. All right. Uh, I see a number of persons raising hands. I'm going to ask if you can hold your questions. I will present, I provide two opportunities for questions and answers, but in a little while I will open some mics to hear from you and to hear what's happening in your neck of the woods. All right, so let me start off by trying to find out what's happening, where you are at. I know you're coming to, to the seminar from a number of countries within the region. So I'm just gonna pick on a few persons and then I'm gonna ask those persons to share what's going on, where they are. I know it's trying times for many of us, challenging to be indoors. My husband is about to go crazy, but let me hear from you what's happening where you are at. The first person I'm gonna take is Des Denise John. Denise, your mic is open. Go ahead. Hi, good evening. Um, where I'm at in terms of SBA and content? No. Where are you from oh. and what's oh, happening? I'm from the Woods, we, the COVID and, you know, this, you know, where your, your fellow citizens, how they're feeling and so on. What's happening where you are at? Okay. Oh, I'm from Guyana. Um, well, we're... All of us aren't on lockdown, but I wish the entire country was on lockdown. But um, we're scared, looking at the numbers, we're scared based on what is going on around the world. But I am doing the Zoom classroom, but then again, that's a disadvantage for all the students because all of them do not have um, internet or computer or so forth. So, Everybody's not at all times in the meetings. Okay. All right. Thank you, Denise. You're welcome. Winsome Maxwell, you may go ahead, just unmute your mic and let me hear from you. Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm from Jamaica, it's my pleasure. Well, from where I'm at, it's uh, unstable. We are very apprehensive. The numbers are not so much, but we are hoping that things will go back to normal soon. Yes. Students are very, very apprehensive and uncomfortable. Right. So, but we are just praying that things will get better. Thanks much for this link. I'm hoping that to learn something. You're welcome, Winsome, and thank you for sharing. Wonderful. You're welcome. All right, I'll take one more person. Let me go all the way down into the alphabet. Mark Hillox, go ahead, please. Unmute your mic and let me hear from you. Good evening, Odin Hillox. Odin Mark Hillox here from Simmons and the Deans. Things are not as bad in other, as it is in other countries. We have virtually zero cases. I say virtually because we have this, the case that we had, or have rather, has to do two tests that need to come back negative before we can say we actually have zero cases. 
We okay. had one confirmed case. It, the person did a test recently and it came out negative. So we are still waiting for the second test, test results before we can say we have zero cases. However, the students have been out of school one week in advance of the Easter break. Right. We should have one break from now, from yesterday until the 14th, or every one break since the 20th of March. Okay. Uh, when speaking to my principal last night, he was projecting that this may extend up until May, and I don't know. It's, 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 it's possible because I think that we have the worst to come. Our borders are still open. A lot of foreigners are still coming, or rather non-nationals are still coming, and we don't have the facilities to quarantine, to do mandatory quarantine. So we are asking persons to do self-quarantine, which is a bit risky, and allowing or placing the responsibility on the returning non returning national, sorry. Okay. For us here right now. So I, I do believe the worst is yet to come, sad to say. So we're just waiting and, and seeing how things play out. Okay. Thank you for that, Mark. Um we will continue to pray with you. We you know, those of us who have been further or are further along on the journey, we know what, what is to come, but we hope that it doesn't get to your shores, really. So we continue to pray. All right, thank you, colleagues, for sharing. I'm sorry I can't take everyone. Um, so far, you're 271 participants, and I'm sure more will join us, but as we go on, others of you will get an opportunity to share um, something or another. All right, let me just share the session objectives. Um, today, the session will try to achieve three things to promote the CXC Learning Hub as a teacher resource, to introduce to you the live class feature available through the CXC Learning Hub, and to share some simple strategies that can be used to host your live classes. All right, so those are the things we'll cover today. I want you to understand that the CXC has started this series of webinars because we really want to support you. We know it's trying times so on everyone, teachers, students, school admin, ministries, other government officials and other ministries, businesses, and just families you know, church, family, community, it's trying. And so we want to provide as much support as we possibly can to the region at this time. And so this series of webinars are really geared, um, the webinars are geared to assisting you to navigate the online experience as many of our ministries have placed their students, as many as possible in the online learning space. And that means the teachers as well. All right, so great. Now, here's an important question, and I'm gonna just ask you, I'm gonna bring up my, my chat feature right now so I can see what's happening in the chat room. And you're going to tell me in just one word, how is it that the concept of hosting a life class make, what, how does it make you feel? What are your thoughts? What are your emotions when you think about the online learning space and you hosting online classes? How does it make you feel? Go ahead and describe that for me in one word. All right, great. I see a number of words coming in. Exciting, exposed, intrigued, uncomfortable, nervous, intimidated. All right, yes. Put them down. I mean, I'm, I'm going to give you like 10 more seconds to share your own feelings. All right. Wonderful. Now, if it is that you have positive feelings towards the online learning space, then that's wonderful. But I know that the natural feeling for most of us who are new to the online space are not so positive. Those feelings range, as I'm seeing here, from uncomfortable to terrified. I want you to normalize those feelings, colleagues. It's normal to feel that way if you do feel that way. 
And if you have some experience or you had, you are adventurous and you really were hoping for this kind of exposure to the online learning space and you are excited, that's normal for you too. Nothing is wrong with the way you are feeling right now. It's normal. It all depends on the context within which you find yourself. However, if those feelings are not positive, just breathe, relax, and learn as much as you can because eventually you'll become excited too. If I may share quickly, I, 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 when I used to teach teachers in training and we, I would have to put them online for online classes in the first instance, many of them would be very fearful. And after the first online class, they'd come back and say to me in the face-to-face, -face, Miss, why don't we have online all the time? So you will have your experience too. You will cross that threshold. But however you are feeling right now, know that you can feel even better about the online experience. And today, the session is really about helping you to get to that place where you feel far more comfortable taking on teaching in the online environment. All right, wonderful. Let me thank you all for sharing. I've seen that one. Um, nerve wracking. Don't worry about it. It will get better. Great. All right, so I want to start off with sharing with you some tips for hosting online sessions. There are about nine or so tips, and then after we complete the tips, and I'll take you on to the CXC Learning Hub for you to see how you can set up live interactions with your classes, all right? Those of you who have your questions, halfway through, I will take some questions, and then I'll move on. All right, so the first thing, there are a couple of things that you need to do when you're hosting live sessions, and some of them you have to do before the session actually begins. The first one is to tell your students what to expect. Whatever it is that you're gonna be hosting a live session around, whatever topic, whatever subject area, be as specific as possible so they know how to prepare themselves for the session that they're coming into. So tell them what the expectations are. What do you expect of them as participants and what do, can they expect of the experience, all right? The next thing is to ask them to come with a burning question. It's always good when students come into the online space, the live interaction space, prepare to have a question answered or a concept explained. So it's usually good to assign some kind of reading or activity or ask them to look at other resources and then come back with at least one question that they can have you answer in the session, all right? Thirdly, plan for some kind of consultation in your session times. Use your synchronous session to answer questions, not necessarily just questions relating to the topic, but to the subject in general, especially now as the students prepare for the exams and they are pretty much engaging in more self-directed learning, you really want they really would want an opportunity to ask you live and direct some questions that they may have. So encourage them as they go through the material that you've been sending to them, that they note questions for your live interaction sessions and spend some amount of your the session period answering those questions, whether they are specific to the content covered in the session or they are specific to the subject in general. All right, so tell your students what to expect, ask them to come with a burning question, and you prepare to make a part of the session a consultation session, all right? So those are the things we do before. I must share with you at this point that these sessions hosted by the CXC are introductory sessions. They are, we are not expecting you to become master teachers uh, as you complete or join these sessions but we are certainly trying to give you some basic tips and ideas about how to navigate the online learning experience. So that's my disclaimer. Um, the expectation is not that you're going to get it all perfect, but we just want you to get off to a great start. All right. At the start of the session, you want to try to 
create an atmosphere that is welcoming. I tried that this evening. I'll have to look at the settings on my machine to determine why is it that you weren't hearing one of my most favorite pieces in the world, especially in times like this. I, I like to play that song and walk around and dance because, you know, you really not we should just try not to worry and be happy. So I was a little bit disappointed that some of you said that you weren't hearing what the, the, the song was saying. But it was part of my attempt also to create that atmosphere where you can come into and not, not be, you know, tense, but relax because we are here to serve each other, right? So set a welcoming atmosphere for the students as they come into your, your session. You may not have to, try a video but whatever you do it may be an icebreaker to begin with but something that will help them to just relax especially at this time when you know the we are bombarded with all sorts of news legitimate and fake on the social media um, platforms then you want to give your students an opportunity to share what's happening with them. So check in with them at the beginning of the class. They haven't seen you in a little while. Some of them will not see you for a little while to come. So when you do meet with them, find out what's going on. In a session like this, when there are hundreds of, hundreds of participants, it's not so easy to do. But when you have your classes of 30, 15, 20, you, you can identify your students by name and ask them to share what's going on with them. If you can't do that for everyone, take a quick sample all right at the start of the lesson two you want to ensure that your use of language is supportive and conversational you want to use your language to set that tone that this is a space that they can feel comfortable in because many of them are going to come to the online learning experience with a lot of apprehensions themselves and many of them are already beginning to feel overwhelmed and if they weren't overwhelmed their parents have made them overwhelmed. I'm, I'm seeing many videos across the globe of overwhelmed parents who are at home working and helping their students to navigate and study. And so a lot of those emotions are spilling over onto our students. So you want when you host your online live sessions that those sessions make them comfortable too, right? So use your language, your tone, you know, share jokes, call them out by name, do whatever you can to make them feel comfortable in this space. All right. During your session, there are three things I want to, to share. And please remember that this recording will be shared with you in about 48 hours after the session. You want to make your lesson relevant and highlight the relevance. What do I mean by that? Tie your lessons to the syllabus, for example. Let them know that, listen, this online live class is addressing this particular concept and this concept addresses this particular objective in your syllabus. Make the lesson relevant to what they are doing. And as they prepare for exams, that, to, that becomes very important for them. So show them where, what the relevance of the lesson is. And that is a good way also that when you are sharing your expectations before the class, the, the session is hosted, sharing the relevance is a good way of getting them to come to the session. You know, there are many distractions in the home at this point. They, are, they have the TV and the other internet enabled devices. So they have friends outside to play with the whole world is at home so you have to find a way to get them to come to your online session and sharing the relevance of the session prior to the class is important but it's also important to share the relevance in the class highlight in the session why the session is relevant another good thing to do is to include novel content as a good strategy to to Focus on topics that you would not have focused on through other means in your live session. So if you've given them topics, um, resources, sorry, through WhatsApp or via email or maybe the Google Classroom, then look in the live session on a topic that they've not or a subtopic that they've not explored otherwise. Or take a difficult topic, something that you realize they're struggling with 
as a class and focus on that in the live lesson. This is one good way to ensure that they come, they remain engaged and motivated to learn. Good. Secondly, pose a question and give the student some time to reflect and write about the question. So this evening I asked you to share with me that one word that describes how you feel about the online class. That's a very good example of getting persons to reflect in a live session and having given them that moment to reflect and share. So try that with your students. Pose a question and get them to write about it. You don't have to take the responses in the class. You could also structure the, the lesson so that when they share or write down whatever it is you've asked them to do, they can share, to you, share with you in another medium. Maybe it is that they can email it back to you or post it on your learning management system, whichever one you're using. But whatever it is, you give them an opportunity to reflect on something that you've said in the session and to write about it, all right? And then lastly, ask questions that require students to pick a side, to make a choice. Those are often good strategies to get the students engaged when they have to share their ideas that are divergent from others and you know negotiate where the middle ground is even in a live class. So it's always good to ask these kinds of open-ended questions that require students to make a choice. That requires a lot of planning and you know teaching in the online space is not easy. It does require you to actually sit and plan carefully how your lessons are going to evolve. But the more you do it, the easier it becomes. All right, so at this moment, I'm going to, well, before that, let me take the next slide and then I'll open up the mics for feedback, questions and answers. All right, so you've gotten some, some tips on what to do. Here are some things to avoid, some common pitfalls. Arrive early, never be late. In the online space, that means you arrive before the class begins, right? So you must arrive early. That's what on time means for the online classroom. It's not good for students to come into the space when the session should have started and you are not there. So always aim at being early for the session. Set ground rules at the beginning of the lesson each time. You may spend some time some quality time working through these ground rules at the big, on, in your first online session. But as you go through this session over and over, you must share those rules again and again and again and again. You may not spend a lot of time on them, but must, you must remind your students what those ground rules are. Important rules like respecting diversity of opinions, um, how to handle the mics, not speaking while others are speaking, not shouting, minimizing background noises, those kinds of things. Work through with th those kinds of ground rules in your very first session and then repeat them, reiterate them as you host other sessions with the same set of students. Limit the use of audio and video. Now, as you would have seen, internet use over the last couple of weeks worldwide is unprecedented. We've never used the internet like we've used it in this time. When we use the synchronous platform, whatever it is, whether you're using Zoom or you're using the CXC Learning Hub or you're using some other thing, the fact is that if all your students are streaming videos, it will have some likely have negative impact on other students. You'll find that depending on the internet service provider and what they can provide to each student, you'll find that having every student with an open mic or an open video will decrease the kind of data packets or bandwidth that you have available to you and create distortions on the line, right? So this is for example why I've muted all of you right now and I'm monitoring carefully what happens with the mics. And we've not enabled the video component of this tool because let me check, we are up to 338 participants. Having all of you having your video, your cameras open, 
would not augur well for the quality of the experience that we share this evening. So you want to limit that. A good thing to do is call on students and open their mics at that point. If your class is small, you can allow for the video interaction, but if it's larger, you manage how students use the video and the mic. All right, and I know some persons will have questions around that. So just note your questions, and when I open the mic, you are you'll be able to share with me your concern. Call students by name and give opportunities for your students to provide feedback to you. All right, in webinars like this, it's much of a one-sided or you know one-way approach to communication. But in your classes, you want to as much as possible replicate the kind of interaction you would have had in the face-to-face -face setting. So you give your students an opportunity to share and you call them by name. Have an activity ready always with your online lesson even if it lasts only for 30 minutes have an activity that the students can work on even if the activity requires that they pull away for five minutes and come back to you but have an activity for them to work on. And by the way, there's something that I didn't share on this list, but it's very important. Do not make your sessions very long. A recommended time frame is 45 minutes, 40 to 45 minutes, maximum an hour. I know many of you have sessions that you, class sessions according to your school's timetable that are longer than an hour, or longer than 45 minutes. But if you have to go beyond that point, make these lessons more activity-based than presentation-based, all right? So keep your lessons short. In actuality, the attention span of the average human being is not more than 30 minutes. It's even with our young people who have far more energy and strength than we do. But you have to be mindful of the fact that after a certain point, diminishing returns will set in and you have to find ways of engaging them or you lose them. So the best thing to do is to keep it short and spicy and use the other times for what we call asynchronous support, not live online um, activities and sessions, but those that are not in the live environment. This is a repeat of something you said before, make your session count. It must be valuable to the participant that they, they attend the session and you have to find ways of getting them to come. And last but not least, find ways of getting feedback about the session from your students. That is the way you're going to get information that will help you to improve how you deliver the sessions and how you make the sessions more relevant to each participant. All right. So thank you. At this point, I will allow persons to share before we go into a live demonstration of the, the hub. So I'm gonna ask if you have any questions, um, I'm gonna lower all hands. And then if you have any questions, just raise your hands and I will allow you to speak. All right, Hillary Ferguson, go ahead. Hello, good evening, everybody. Thanks so much for having us here. It's very useful. Um, my question is regarding the Learning Hub, and I see that it's embedded with Big Blue Button. I was actually trying to figure out its um, comparison to Zoom because I started using Zoom in my classes, but then I realized that Big Blue Button was another option. So my question is, what is the... Um, advantage of using big blue button you would say over zoom or like how, what's the comparison in your eyes basically is what i would like to know all right um hillary that's yeah. a very good question i i should let you know that as far as synchronous platforms go today there is not much difference between the products available on the market um, they are competing products and they try as much as possible to provide the best user experience for the participants and the hosts. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. For the CXC Learning Hub and our integration with the big, big blue button, you'll find that whereas the, some 
teachers are not able, whether privately or through their school, to afford uh, a Zoom enterprise license, and they ha they have to use the free version. Mm -hmm. We don't have the the issue of having the session end exactly at forty minutes or forty five minutes. Many of the teachers have already begun to share that when they use the Zoom free account, after about forty or forty five minutes everybody's logged out and they have to struggle to come back in. And sometimes they lose their students at that point. They, some of them don't bother to return. With mm -hmm. the big group on integration for the CXC Learning Hub, that is not a challenge. So that is your primary advantage. Outside okay. of that, the features are comparable. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, I'll take another hand. Crystal Webster. Go ahead. Crystal. All right, Hillary, you can lower your hand for me, please. I'm not hearing from Crystal, so let me identify someone else. Nobody else with questions? Great. I'm not seeing any more hands. Oh, okay. I'm seeing some now. Great. Norveen Reed. Go ahead. Just unmute your mic, Norveen, and then you can speak. Norveen? All right, I'm not getting hearing from Norveen, I hope. She's not experiencing any challenge. James? James Leacock. Hello. Hi. All right. Nice. Um, do you need an app for this? Like Zoom, they had to download an app. Some students struggle to download Zoom. Some students in our state download Zoom. Can we use this in the browser? Right, you can. Okay, all right. It's web-based. It's browser-based. All right. All right, no problem. All right, I'll take a few more. Ken Wayne Boudram, go ahead. Unmute your mic and begin. Yeah, are you hearing me now? Yes. <laughs> okay. My question is this, right? Um, all of this is fine in the classroom, and we're teaching this by the internet. The thing about it is what happens to the real exam, CXC exam? How are we going to play this out with the real kids? Can you, can you expand on that a little bit more, Ken Wayne? Okay. Okay. Um, Let's take, for instance, right? We're doing online teaching in the classroom, but CXC is here. It's, it's right at the door. So what are we going to do? How are we going to um, give the exam to the kids? Are we going to do an online thing with the kids? Are we going to do the real CXC? Because I don't want to put, I don't want to make teachers feel that we are nothing in terms of, we would teach them a certain way in the classroom. How is the exam going to play the part now? Okay, um, Ken, is Ken yes. Wayne, right? Yeah, that's All correct, right. ma'am. All right, so I'm gonna mute you and then I'm gonna respond. Thank you for that question. Now, as it stands now, you would have, the territories would have been apprised that there is a strong consideration being given to the administration of the examination for this year and how that is to be administered given the challenges we are facing with the COVID. 
Now, whilst that decision is not yet final, we could find an, a number of possibilities playing out in terms of the actual administration of the exam. I know, for example, the registrar and CEO has been speaking um, very vociferously about the digital online approach to exam administration, a, a digital strategy. Until then, Ken, we do the same that we've always done. We prepare our students based on the actual objectives in the syllabus. Those don't change. So the modality how we administer will is, is a decision that will have to be shared in the final analysis, but it doesn't change what really needs to happen, that our students should be able to our students should be able to actually master the objectives on each syllabus for the subjects that they are taking. So can I, I hope that answers your question. In fact, can you just, I'm gonna, can you just unmute and tell me if you understand what I'm saying? Sorry, you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay. I understand what you're saying to a point that when it comes down to the ballpoint pen, mm -hmm. what, are they, what are they going to write? Is it going to be a multiple choice? Is it going to be essay type? I mean, who is going to be there to see that the child is really doing his or her exam? Right. So my, my question is, I mean, we have to plan properly what we're doing for these kids because I don't want to waste my time in school the last two years teaching them and telling them do this do that and now they're saying ha ha well i serve business because you know what i gain it easy squeezy oh so well um thank you ken i understand the concern i'm gonna mute you now ken at the end of the day we were all in uncharted territory the entire world and we just have to find creative and innovative ways of making it work. Now, there are many resources, even in the on online space, that will allow for integrity of exams being sat via um, computers and, and online platforms. So just allow the, the, your, the CXE and the varying ministries to work on those matters. But at the end of the day, our attitude has to reflect some amount of flexibility, innovation, and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Resilience, because this is unprecedented. It is uncharted, and we all have to find ways of supporting each other. And I think this is what the CXC is trying to do. So they'll work it out, Ken, um, because the integrity of the exam is important to the Caribbean Examinations Council, just the same. So we'll find a way to make it work. In the meantime, just focus on ensuring that the students are prepared for whatever format the exam comes in and, and keep listening to the bulletins and the information shared through the council and through your local media. All right, Ken, I hope that. All right, I'm gonna just take one more and then we move on. Um, guys, those of you who still have questions, I will try to finish the session within time and then I will remain in the room to answer any of your questions. So please bear with me. Uh, Jalissa, if I write now, Jalissa Bain, I'll take your question now. Go ahead, Jalissa, unmute and... Hi, good evening. What I wanted to find out is the app CXE really help. Is it compatible with children? Because I got my students to register, but oh no, they tried to join the class, they were unable to find that picture on the cell phone itself. Okay. But if they, I must all of them have a laptop that they could use for the platform. Okay. So is there that, that picture is available through the cell phone, so I need to look at the laptop platform to use. Okay. All right, um, Jalissa, you're, I, I couldn't catch all that you said because of some feedback in your background, but I think I understand what you are trying to get at. Just stay tuned because as we go into the next segment, 
that question I believe will be answered. All right? All right. Okay, thank you, Jalissa. All right, so guys, so we're going on to the learning hub and I'm gonna stop sharing this presentation now and then move to the actual learning hub space. So bear with me as I switch screens, please. Okay, now, if it is that you have not yet been onto the CXC Learning Hub, this is what it looks like. And that's the URL, learninghub.cxc.org. So if you're new to the Learning Hub, please take note of the URL, the website address, and go and visit it after the session is complete this evening. When you log on, I'm encouraging you at this moment because our response to the COVID had to be swift, then you'll find that at this current moment in time, the profile of instructor does not allow you to see the, all the resources on the hub. So we encourage you to have two accounts for now. But later on, we'll regularize all our instructor accounts to ensure that you are able to see what your students see. So for now, you have to maintain a student account and a instructor, an instructor account using separate email addresses for both of them. All right? Good. Now, I'm going to share with you the live class um, segment of the hub, but I'm not going to be on the standard learning hub platform. We have a training platform that I'm going to be sharing with you from. So I'm going to go to that momentarily. So when you log into the Learning Hub or sign up as an instructor and then log in, this is what your dashboard will look like. The student dashboard will look dif a little differently. It will actually take them to a specific subject. Students are asked or student participants are asked to select subjects from the different CXE products, whether it is CAPE, CSEC, CCSLC or others. And those subjects, one of those subjects will appear when the student logs in. When you log in as an instructor, this is where you are taken. In response to COVID, this is what we have done so that the instructor is taken directly to the space where they can set up a live class, all right? Now, when you go on, you won't see anything in this table except the headings, name, level, subject, student, action, and so on. The first thing you want to do when you get onto your dashboard is to create a class. And that class can be given a name based on the subject that you are teaching or the lesson or topic you want to cover using this medium. All right. So for now, I'm going to demo creating a class. Um, and you can name your classes depending on, you know, your your personal preferences and what will communicate clearly to your student. That is foremost, right? You must select a level, and this is from the list of CXE products, and you must select a subject. All right, great. You can add a file, an image to be associated with your, your class, and you can add information relating to the class. So our class description is very, is appropriate here. All right. And you can use a text editor here to do a number of things. You can insert audio, images, video, special characters, lines, page breaks, and so on. Whatever you want to share on this page, in relation to the class itself, you can do that. All right, great. So I'm just gonna put 
some X's on here so you can see that the text editor is there for you to work on. Then you click submit. All right, and so you would have successfully created your lesson, your lesson space. Now, do not be confused. Your lesson is not your class. So within a lesson, you can give your students text. You can provide other kinds of resources for them through the text editor that we looked at just now. And you can also create a live session for them in the class, right? So, um, the, I, I forget the, the participant who spoke to me last just now. Your question, this is very, very important. Once you've created the class, you need to give your students the class code, all right? And the code is found here, just below the information for their class. So you have the course name, teacher's name, the course code. This code can be shared in whatever medium or channel you use to communicate with your students, whether it is email, text message, WhatsApp. What will happen is when they go onto the hub and they go to the specific subject that the course or the, the class is tied to, in this case, this class was tied to, what was it again? English, right? They go to English, they'll get the option to select available class. Once they get the available class, once they click on that button, they'll be given the option to insert a course code and that will bring up this particular lesson that you are creating for them. All right, so the course code is very important. That is what you share with your class. Now, once you've set up the, the class, you move to class outline. Here you have objectives. So in my description space, it's a good place to put my objectives as well. But beside the objectives tab is the class outline tab. And that class outline tab will allow me to create a lesson. That lesson, the actual live lesson. So I'm just gonna set that up now. Of course, you'll put a description. Uh, not lies, live. <laughs> All right. And you schedule, once you have, you've created that class, you schedule the event. It will ask you to select the date and time and it will give the default current date and current time as the default. You can set the duration one hour or more or less, but we encourage you not to move beyond one hour. Remember guys, you want to keep your engagement high. There are some advanced settings. Those can be ignored, but if you want to use them, you can set the maximum number of seats, how many persons are allowed to come to the class. Um, you can set that the students register before the class occurs and you set how many days before they start and how many days they can cancel before they start. Once you've done that, you click on add. And it's processing. And here you have it, available now, start class. Once you click on the class, then you are taken into the big blue button conference room. Now, before I get into the big blue button conference room, you can set up these classes ahead of time. So if you do set a class prior to your current time, you will not be able to enter the class until it's time for the class to start, all right? I mean, it's pretty logical. If if the time, if the date and time hasn't yet arrived, then there is no need to go in because you'd have communicated that to your students. Now, 
you don't necessarily have to share that with your students. They will see this as well on their profile when they click and put in your course code. All right. So once they have your course code, they'll have access to the classes that you've created. And you can schedule as many of these as you as you need. Please be mindful that we are serving the entire region. So whilst you have at this moment the ability to create many, many lessons, we ask you to be as conservative as you possibly can so that the resource can be shared with all of us within the region. All right. Great. Now once you are ready to host the class, you come back into your CXC Learning Hub space through the dashboard. Manage, and maybe I should just take you back to the dashboard and show you what that's, that looks like. So let's say I had created this class ahead of time. I want to manage. I go to class outline, choose a live class if it's one event. and I start my class. Once you start, if you start your class, then you are preparing to go into the big blue, blo big blue button environment. Sorry about that. So I think um, the person who posed the question last, the real key to getting your students into the class is giving them that code. Once they have the code, then they'll click on the corresponding icon that looks pretty much like the one I just clicked on from the instructor side and they'll come right to this space. You will test your devices, your speaker, your microphone, and then I just did an echo test, great. And here you have the live environment. Now this live environment operates pretty much like the one we are in. The, th the items may appear differently on the screen, but they do pretty much the same thing. So you can share notes, you can chat publicly, um, you can see the users. So if I had more persons in this room, you'd, you'd see the list of users here. Uh, you could send a chat. And I'm sure if there were other persons in here, you'd have been able to demo that you can send chat privately and so on. Here, as default, the big blue button provides on the very first slide information relating to how you can use the platform. So it gives you all the features. It tells you what's available to you, chat, webcam, audio, emojis, breakout rooms, so you can group students, polling, screen sharing, and multi-user whiteboard. You want to navigate away from this first slide in order to get a blank space. So if I click back, I'm taken back to this space that provides the information, but once I click here, moving from slide one to next slide, slide two, then I'm given a blank whiteboard and you can use the annotation tools here to add to your whiteboard. All right, so you can add text, lines, graphics, pencil, and so on. All right, you can undo your annotation. So let's say I highlight on my board, then I can undo with the undo button and I can delete and so on. All right, this option allows you to give the students the opportunity to write on the whiteboard themselves and you can use the tools here to share your screen and share applications from your computer like a PowerPoint presentation or a video or some other kind of application. All right. Great. So pretty much this is it. Once you've done that, then you're good to go. The CXC Learning Hub provides you with that kind of option so that you can actually meet your students face to face, so to speak. You do have the video here. You can share webcam and they'll have that too. 
All right, so at this point, I'm gonna go back to my presentation and then take some questions. Important, important note here. This is an, uh, a website URL that you must have, support.cxe.org. You can reach out to us via this medium or through our social media platforms. But if you go to the support site, you are able to log your questions, get a ticket and await one of our customer service representatives to respond to you and then close out the ticket once you would have been responded to. So please note that. Um, let me just leave it right here for you for one more second, support.cxc.org. All right. So let's now take some questions. All right, I've, I seem to have misplaced my, all right, let me find my participants. Okay, great, they, are, they took a little while to come up just now. All right, so I'm gonna lower all hands again. If you had a question from before, don't worry. I know you're, big, big, not because I lower the hands, it means that the questions have disappeared. I know you have your questions, but I want to just, get a few more questions, one question or two questions in, then I'll close out the session. And then those of you who still have questions can actually remain with me and I'll answer those questions for you. All right, so I'm lowering the hands now and I'm taking two or three questions. Then I'll officially close this session, but I'll remain in the room for any of the questions that you have. So if you have questions, please, Raise your hand now. All right. I see J M. It's Maggie. J Maggie, go ahead. Unmute and speak, please. Good evening. Will this presentation be available on other platforms like YouTube, maybe or? Yes, and I will share the link with you through sure. the CXEs. Um, email address. That's fine. That's it will, I will share with you in another 24 to 48 hours the yes. link to this presentation, to this Thank recording. You. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Great. Andre, go ahead. Andre without a last name. Go ahead, Andre, just unmute your mic and begin. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, um, just one thing. The code has generated, is it a random generated code for the student or you have to put in the code? No, it is generated by the system and it is the code for that particular class. So once you, you would have seen on my dashboard that I had, um, fractions on there i think i had math general and english yeah once so i had three separate courses called them that each of those had their own code okay and okay. i'll share those with my students okay i see all right Thank you. great all right um latoya lynch go ahead Latoya, your mic is very low. Okay. Is there a way to yes, let me increase check. the volume? Let me check the volume. Yes. Are you hearing me better? A little, yes. Go ahead. Okay. I just wanted to find out um, the big blue button. 
um, that does, does that allow for the lesson planning with, to be done within the program days before the live lesson, meaning can slides be populated prior to the live session? Uh, no, you would have to populate your slides in one of your desktop applications like PowerPoint, PowerPoint. right? And then you will share in the big blue button space. Okay. That's the same for most of these kinds of platforms, including the Zoom here that we are using for this webinar tonight. So you oh. would have to create a presentation and then share. If you wanted to put uh, information on the whiteboard, mm -hmm. as in text, you would yeah. have to prepare those and then um, sh copy and paste, for example, into the whiteboard for them. Okay. All right. No problem. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Great. Um, I'll take this last one, then I'm going to ask, then I'm going to officially close out. So I'm asking you to remain with me because these questions are pretty good questions. Um, Mahalia Edwards Horsham. Go ahead. Unmute your mic, Mahalia. Mahalia. Mahalia? Edwards, yes, go ahead. I'm, yes, I'm, I'm, we're I'm hearing you now. Um, I'm inquiring whether we have to pay to use this platform or is it free? Because I remember you mentioned about Zoom giving you an allotted time to use this platform. Thank right. You. Okay. You're welcome. Um, while I answer my Mahalia, I'm going to launch a poll now asking you to just give me some feedback about the session. Just one question. So while you, we, you listen for the response I'm about to give Mahalia, you can just respond to the poll for me, please. Thank you. All right, so the, the, the service that is being provided to you now is free to you, but costed to the Caribbean Examinations Council. It is our way of supporting you, especially at this time, even as you try to prepare your students for the upcoming exams and just also to ensure that your students are engaged while they are out so it's free it's free to you at our cost and we are happy to serve you in this way i hope that answers your question mahalia all right great colleagues i'm going to ask you to spend the time now to respond to the, the poll question that i've posted it's very, very important that we get feedback. All right, and in the meantime, I will take questions from others. So uh, Andre and Mahela, can you lower your hands for me so I can move on to some others? Now, Mrs. Vincent, go ahead. Go Hi, ahead. good evening. The question was answered already. Thanks. Great. All right, great. Guys, if the question you wanted to ask has already been asked and answered, just lower your hand so that I can get to other questions um, that may even benefit you. All right. Um, VASU, not sure how to pronounce that, so, but you are up next. Go ahead. Right. Hi, good evening, Jeanette. Um, it's Vasu. Vas right. All right. That's right, actually question, nice. My question is, um, I want to find out if the online learning hub is exclusively for online meetings, or um, is there any um, any opportunity for us to put the content on there so that students can access it at any time? All right. So if you can recall, we're not on that screen right now. Um, Vasu, and thank you for that question. The, the segment, when you are actually creating the course and creating the class within the course, you, you are able to create in that course description, you are able to put your objectives on and you are able to put notes on. The editor is not as sophisticated as in other places, so it does offer some limitations. 
but the, the intent is not that you'll place a lot of content on. The feature is re was really enabled to facilitate mostly your synchronous or live sessions with some additional support in terms of text and other resources tied to those live sessions. So I hope that answers your question. So you won't be able to build that out as a robust um, LMS class, for example, you know, with the bells and whistles. It's pretty basic because the, in the real intent was to provide you with those live interactive or interaction opportunities. Now, recall that the CX is working in tandem with your local representatives, your ministries, and the other bodies that serve you in, in this kind of way. So there are a number of resources available to you. What I've, in other sessions like this, the teachers from around the region, they have suggested incorporating what happens on the CXC Learning Hub, even for this live component with the with whatever they're using, whether it is the Google Classroom or something else, by just sharing the links from one to the other. So you probably could put the link to your Google Classroom space, for example, in that editor on the CXE Learning Hub for your live class, All right? I hope that answers, Basu, that answers your question. All right. Clifton, Michael, Royer, I think that's Liverpool. Go ahead. Okay. Good evening to you. Good evening. Jeanette. It's a wonderful learning experience. I just wanted to ask, um, when you said that we are to create two, two um, classes, so to speak, confirmed cases of the virus. The health minister yes, said... Christian, the yes. I'm not hearing you. Go ahead. The case is a 48-year-old woman from St. Elizabeth. I'm sorry, getting some feedback from some radio. Um, what I'm saying is that... You hear me now? Yes, yes. Yeah. What I'm saying is that you, you were making mention of two two um, forms we had to open up. We had to open up as an instructor and um, as a student. Right. We open up two accounts on the um, learning hub. Mm -hmm. In the space, that we, the space of time that we have for pre pre preparing our students to, um, to do the exams coming up in May or June or whatever it is, what time do we have to, to plan? Would we have to plan these two classes or two um, accounts to facilitate these two accounts to manage them. Okay. All right, so let me just clarify, um, Clifton, that's a very good question. Thank you for it. I'm going to mute you now. Um, so on the student side of the hub, which we are encouraging you to sign up for and have a look at what's available to your students in the hub, there are just resources. There are resources of every kind there. There are open educational resources that we have curated specially for your students and for you in alignment with the objectives on the syllabus. So for example, if when you go to the hub and you look at our digital toolkit that is embedded in each subject, you'll find that all the resources are aligned to objectives on the specific syllabus. So if you go to math and you pick up the first objectives, you will find, I'm sorry, my, 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 my smartphone is responding to my speech. Um, technology can't get any smarter than this. Sorry about that, colleague. But you'll find, I was saying, when you go to math, you'll find in the digital, digital toolkit, you'll find open educational resources that are linked to or tied to specific objectives. Yeah, You'll also find practice papers, you'll find subject reports, you'll find the actual syllabus so your students can see the syllabus that is aligned to each subject on the learning hub. So there's not much preparation time that is needed for your viewing mm -hmm. of the resources on the hub. When I'm, 
I'm encouraging you to go to the hub and sign up as a student so you can actually see what's available to your students. And so you have a sense of what is available to them, what you can send them to. Um, on the teacher side now, the instructor side, when you sign up as an instructor, Clifton, what you are able to do is to host the live lessons, right? So pretty much that's it. I am not sure um, how, how you are impacted specifically by what's happening now because every school, every student, every territory, every class is impacted a little differently than others. But we, it is our hope that even in the remaining, the remaining time, what we do have of it and through the access to the resources that we have available to us, that we are able to do some things with our students to prepare them for. Remember now, they, we would have been preparing for the greater part of two years or more. This is the final lap, but we've been interrupted. Our normal operations would have been interrupted. So what we're trying to do is to make the best out of this situation. Right, Clifton, so I hope that answers you. So um, maybe you can reach out to me later on, Clifton, so we can look at maybe some specific strategies that will suit you and your particular challenges that you are having with your students. Yeah, all right, great. Um, Colleagues, I want to officially bring this session to a close. Please remember to respond to the feedback question. But if you are not able to continue with us and you have to leave, you are free to do so at this point. I will remain in the room to answer more of your questions. But thank you nonetheless for joining us we hope to see you on the hub we hope to see you and your students on the hub as we again navigate this difficult period and i hope that as you interact with the resources on the learning hub and you set up your live classes for your students then you will be able to feel more comfortable in the online learning space i have a funny feeling that this new paradigm is something that will remain with us, that it, it is not seasonal, but it will become what is to be our new normal. You have yourselves a good evening, and I reiterate, I remain in the room to answer the questions as they appear on my list of participants. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your evening.